Good morning. It is about nine o'clock over here and I have a naughty kitty move. I have a naughty kitty yelling at me this morning, uh, but we really, really kitty. All right. Um, we're going to get through a section, I think it's 12, 11.3 today. Is that correct? Uh, let me pull it up real quick. Uh, share screen and something like that. Uh, we're going to be dealing with this today, and I love it. I love it because right under that first instruction, it says there is no general method that works for all nonlinear systems. So we've got to try different things. We've got to try a little bit of our problem solving. We've got to really engage the brain to see how this works. Um, substitution is going to come into play. Elimination might come into play. Uh, graphing is a great idea. It says uh, you can see uh, there, if I go like this. Uh, graphing is a great thing to do to give me an idea of both how many solutions and whereabouts they're going to be. Also, uh, a little bit of a pitfall here. We might end up with some extraneous solutions mathematically, so we're going to have to always uh, check at the end. Okay, uh, most of today is really just going to be uh, me pausing the video, uh, allowing you to pause the video, I should say, uh, and work through these on your own. Um, but let's do this first one together. Let me switch screens like this. Uh, let me write it down. We have the nonlinear system, y equals x minus 1. Well, that's a line. And y squared, oh, that's not a line, equals negative 4x. And so we are looking to see where these two things overlap. Uh, let me turn off that so this becomes a little bit larger. Okay, uh, y equals x minus 1 is the graph of a line, slope of 1, y-intercept of negative 1. Looks something like this. We don't have to be ridiculously accurate or anything. Uh, we just want to have an idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, this is a sideways facing parabola. It goes through 0, comma 0. If I plug in a 0, I get a 0 there. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, think of it as negative 1 fourth y squared equals x so that I can plug in a y value like 1. I can square it, still have 1, and negative 1 fourth of that is negative 1 fourth. The same thing would happen if I plugged in uh, a negative one for y, and so I think it's pretty safe to say that I have a parabola which is going to look something like that, okay? Uh, the way I've drawn it doesn't appear like it's going to uh, intersect this thing, but again, that's just a rough sketch. It could happen somewhere in this region-ish, okay? So uh, let's see if we can do some substitution here. Uh, although what I'm going to substitute in is actually some uh, value for x. So I am going to take this equation and that equation, and every time I see an x, I'm going to replace it with this negative one-fourth y squared business. y equals negative one-fourth uh, y squared all minus one. Let's multiply everything by four so I don't have fractions. Maybe a negative four would be appropriate. I'll get negative four y equals y squared plus four and zero equals y squared plus four y plus four. Okay, uh, this thing, is it factorable? Uh, two and two? Uh, so y uh, plus 2 quantity squared equals 0, of course, equals 0. And apparently y would equal negative 2. Let's plug it in and see. Uh, if y equals negative 2, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 1 fourth is negative 1. So we'd be looking at the point negative 1 comma negative 2. And... Let's just double check that that appears on both of these. 
So if I were to plug in a negative one over here, negative one minus one is of course negative two. So, yep. And if I were to plug in a negative one over here, I got negative four times negative one, which is positive four. Does that equal negative two squared? Yes, that is my solution. Okay, um, let's take a look now at the second problem. Uh, let's see if I can do this a little bit faster. Okay, and there it is on our screen. Uh, I will give it a shot. So should you. And we'll catch up at the end. Can I pause? Uh, that seems weird. Um, Okay, I hope you had a chance to do problem number two, example number two. Uh, I did, I did a really rough sketch. Uh, not real great seeing as uh, the vertex of this parabola should be somewhere on this axis six. I didn't decide whether it was above or below it, just kind of drew it in. Uh, and the x-intercept uh, for the line should be eight. So not really drawn to scale, just kind of giving myself some idea. Um, I did some substitution since we knew that uh, that x was equal to, or y was equal to x squared minus 12x plus 36. I just substituted that into the second equation and I solved and I came up with this, which is an inappropriate way to write the answer. Uh, I wrote x equals seven or four and y equals one or hello. Uh, one or four, yep. Um, but that's inappropriate because it doesn't really tell me how it goes. If x is seven, could y be four? Now, really, I want two sets of ordered pairs. Four, four, comma, four. And those look pretty good. Uh, plugging them in seems like they should work. Seems like a line and a parabola should presumably intersect twice. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Again, I'm gonna invite you to pause uh, this and work it out on your own. I'm gonna do the same thing, and I will see you on the other side of that. Okay, so this is what I have done so far. Uh, it was a little weird in what I did from the step to the step, just looking at it and going, oh, okay, well, something times that same thing, minus one equals six, three times two, or negative two times negative three, both equal positive six. I didn't really do that in a traditional way. What I haven't done yet is listed these out. I could have the point three, once I found that y equals three, I plugged in here uh, and taking advantage of the three, four, five triangle. Uh, I got plus or minus four for y, um, mm, excuse me, for x. So I guess this should be plus or minus four comma three and plus or minus root 21 comma negative two. But even that seems like an inappropriate answer. You know what I haven't done yet? Drawn a graph. Okay, uh, hopefully from the get-go, you recognize this as a circle with a radius of five and a center at zero, zero. Uh, and x squared plus y equals 19 is another one of those parabolas. Uh, I'm gonna think of it more along the lines of y equals negative x squared plus 19. Um, and it should look something like that, maybe intersecting, maybe not. Um, is it possible that it intersected twice? Of course. Uh, so all of these numbers seem like they should work over here, plus or minus four comma three, but I haven't tried them out over here yet. So uh, four squared, 16 plus three, 19, negative four squared plus three, 19. Looks like all of those work. Uh, and 
uh, root 21, whether it's positive or negative, uh, squared is going to be 21, minus 2 is all 19. So yeah, think a more realistic look as it looks something like that, where it comes both in and out of the circle. So yeah, looks like I've got a bunch of working solutions here. Okay. Uh, I was thinking that some of those weren't going to work. Uh, this time, a little bit different, we did elimination. Uh, I suppose I could have done substitution, but if I had, I'd really wanted to use x squared as the variable I was substituting for. Okay, well, let me pull up the next one. And again, I'm gonna pause. I recommend that you pause. Give yourself a chance to try this. All right, so this is where I got to. Uh, I reorganized that second equation a little bit so I could do elimination and subtract. The x squared minus x squared is no more x squareds. The y squared minus a negative y is going to be a positive y, and 1 minus 9 is going to be that negative 8. I wrote it in standard form, and I looked at the discriminant, that b squared minus 4ac business, and realize that it is less than zero. That tells me that this has no real solutions. Um, let's take a quick look at what the graph should look like. Again, we started with a circle centered at zero, zero. This time it's a very small circle with a radius of one. And we have this parabola, which starts off way down here. And so by the time it gets up there, it's wide enough where I assume it would have missed it. If y equals zero, then x equals plus or minus three, and yeah, we're way to the side of this thing. So uh, for number four, I'm getting no solution. All right, let's take a look at number five. Woo, there's a spicy one. Um, I will give you a opportunity to do it. Um, looking at this one might not be the most fun thing in the world to graph. Uh, you're certainly welcome to, but uh, I, we could rewrite that top equation as a natural log of x over natural log of y, which according to the unchange of base formula is really the log base y of x uh, equals three. Let's uh, start this one together. So I have natural log of x over natural log of y equals 3. So really, I have the log base y of x equals 3. So really, I have y cubed equals x. And all of a sudden, that's not the worst thing in the world to graph. Um, my other one is uh, x equals 9y, uh, x equals 9y. Also not the worst thing in the world to graph. Uh, I'm feeling like a little bit of uh, elimination or substitution. They're really going to get us to the same place pretty quick here. Uh, looks like we're just going to do this one together. So uh, I'm going to say that y cubed equals x, well, x equals 9y, so according to substitution or really the transitive property, that is the case. I'm going to say y cubed minus 9y equals 0. I'm going to say that y times the quantity of y squared minus 9 equals 0. This is further factorable, but let's just jump to it and say that y either equals 0 or plus or minus Three. Well, wait a second. Uh, are some of these things outside the domain? Uh, can I take the natural log of zero? That's really saying, hey, e to what power equals zero? Mm, no. Can I take e to the positive three? Yes. Or natural log of positive three? Yes, but not negative three. So really, I think my only shot here is positive 3. I'm going to plug back in, and I'm going to get that uh, x equals 27. So 27, comma 3. 
seems like my answer. Uh, let's check uh, the natural log of 27 equals three times the natural log of y. Seems right that three can become an exponent. Uh, I guess I could have done that a little bit easier if I had just made it into an exponent off the bat and said natural log of x equals natural log of y cubed and eliminated those guys. Would have ended up in the same place a little bit faster. Um, and of course, 27 equals 9 times 3 seems legit to me. Okay, looks like we have a good answer there. Uh, without graphing it, Again, if you want to, uh, graphing from the original equation seems a little crazy, but graphing either that or that, mm, not so bad. Okay, on to example six. I will, uh, I will pause it this time and allow you to do the same. Okay, this one came out kind of on the nice side. I'll blow it up a little bit. Uh, I did graph it that uh, y equals 6 over x, or xy equals 6, uh, is one of these uh, hyperbolas. And the other equation uh, was linear. I did some substitution. I don't think elimination was a possibility here. So I solved the first equation for y. I plugged that value in every time we saw y. And now I have one equation which only has x's. If I multiply everything by x, it looks a little quadratic. I solved that by factoring. I got that x equals negative 3 or negative 2. The corresponding y values, uh, the one which corresponds to negative 3, is a negative 2. And the one which corresponds to negative 2 is a negative 3. Plug that back in, and wah-bam. That looked kind of on the straightforward side. Like it? Well, let's see what else we got. God, looks like two more. And off to pausing. Oops. Okay, uh, so for this one, I use some substitution. Uh, both things were equal to y, so I set both of those expressions equal to one another. Um, I graphed it this time around um, on Desmos. Uh, not that Desmos won't just straight out tell you what the answers are if you, uh, if you hover around here. Uh, negative 1, 14 and 1, 4. Hopefully that's uh, what you got um, over here. It's what we got as well. Uh, x equals 1. Both of them seem to work. Okay. Uh, last problem. Let's see what that one looks like. And again, give you guys a little bit of a chance to get on ahead of me. Okay, uh, last one up here. Uh, I did a little bit of substitution. Um, I wrote this as a quadratic and did a little bit of another kind of substitution. Um, once I solved the quadratic, and we saw something similar to this, I believe, on the last test. Once I solved that quadratic, I remembered that I had to, to plug back in for 3 to the x. Uh, one of which gave me a solution which doesn't seem to make any sense. Uh, the other did. Uh, it did not have instructions, unlike the test, uh, to write it in calculator-ready format. So I just wrote it as the log base 3 of 2 equals x. If I wanted to put it into calculator-ready format, that would be the natural log of 2 over the natural log of 3 or something equivalent to that. Okay. Uh, that seems good. I will catch up with you again uh, after the weekend. Do have a good weekend and feel free to reach out to me if you want to meet in person. So, uh, goodbye. Boom. Turn on my other camera.
so I can wave goodbye. Uh, cat asleep on an algebra book, very important. All right, bye-bye.